Luke 19, 30 through 35. Saying, go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, wherein yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were, that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the coat, the owner thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the coat? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus. They cast their garments upon the coat, and they sat Jesus thereon. So I want to speak for just a little while. The Lord needs it. Lord bless you. You can be seated. This isn't a very complicated verse of Scripture. I'm not going to try to pull out the Greek meaning of the Lord or has need or anything of that nature. But it, it's just very straightforward. And, and Jesus, don't misunderstand what I'm going to say. Jesus was a simple person. And what I mean by that is he taught using loaves and fishes. He taught and, and he did miracles by spitting into the dirt and making a little bit of mud and putting it on people's eyes. He, he, he taught people and he said, you know, the lilies of the field. And he said, the sower went out to sow some seed. And he said, there's, there's going to be two in the field. One will be taken and one will be left behind. And he talked about a grinding mill. And, and, and he talked about when you go to plow, don't look back. Don't take your hands off the plow. Jesus didn't say the cosmos was designed. And the intergalactic forces of this and that acting upon that will cause Jesus said, you discern the sky, you know when it's red, you know what it means. He was a simple man. He, he, he knew everything. He did every, He made everything. There was nothing. No one could say anything that he didn't know. He could have explained the, the phrase in the Old Testament, the life is in the blood. They didn't know what that meant, but the life is in the blood. We understand now better what it means. The life is in the blood. If you don't have any blood, you don't have any life. And what the blood does for the body, and I don't even think we know everything yet. Because one day we shall know as we are known. Jesus, he knew everything. He, he's the creator of the universe. He made everything that exists. I'm not saying he was simple in that, that he, he just, he didn't understand stuff, but he related to the people. He related to the common individual. He, he just, he spoke on their level. He could have wowed them. He, he wowed the lawyers and the, the doctors and the teachers when he was 12. Who is this kid? <laughs> well, he's my son and he's lost. Excuse me. Let's go. Let's. But Jesus, he, 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 he just used the simple stuff. This is his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The one and only time that Israel recognizes him, maybe not as a nation, but for the most part, they come together and at least agree for a few days, king is here. They throw their garments in the road. And, but Jesus doesn't come with the trumpets blaring before him. 16 chariots before his golden chariot comes last. He's not up on a throne somewhere with 20 footmen carrying him. He's just on a lowly beast. He's just riding on, on this animal. And he comes in. This is our king. I imagine some of them had to say, yay, till they saw, what? I saw the Roman garrison through here last week, and eh, their horses were a lot bigger than his. You know, the human mind, that's how we are. And, and 
Maybe not. I'm just thinking there had to be a few people that began to doubt as they were, you know, the palm branches and. (laughs) Really? This is the guy that's going to free us from Roman oppression? Well, not the way they were thinking. He wasn't rising up with the rebellion and we're going to take over these guys and I'm going to kick Caesar out of Rome and we're going to rule the world. That's that's not the kingdom that he was talking about, and Jesus clarified that. If my kingdom was of this world, then my servants would rise up. But this, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is different. It will give you freedom from the Romans. It'll give you freedom from the Greeks, from the Persians. It'll give you freedom from everybody else. Because it's a freedom in here that no man can give you. It's a freedom that regardless of the bonds you may have in the natural life, regardless of the limitations you might have in a natural life, The kingdom that I have, that I give you, that I offer you, is an eternal, everlasting kingdom. And there's nothing that anybody can do to stop it. There's a song we we sing in Spanish, and I don't really translate to English, but, you know, I'm going to praise the Lord with my hands. And if I don't have my hands, I'm going to praise the Lord with my feet. If I don't have my feet, I'm going to praise the Lord with my mouth. If I don't have my mouth, I'm going to praise the Lord with my soul. If I don't have my soul, I'm going to... I'm already with God. <laughs> es porque ya me fui con él. Gloria a Dios. I would sing that for you, but if, if I was to sing, then um, this building would probably collapse. You don't want me to sing, so we'll just leave it right there. And that's a good thing for you. <laughs> Jesus, as he comes into... Jerusalem. Now the setup is what I want to talk about. I know I have 16 and a half minutes, so I'm okay. I don't want to talk about the triumphal entry. I don't want to talk about the palm branches and the robes thrown into the street. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes. That's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is what got us to there. It's very interesting. Jesus said, okay, go to the city. You're going to find an ass, the colt of an ass tied. When you find it, loose it and bring him here. Disciples were like, that's good. But um, in essence, you're telling me I'm going to find a car parked over here. Just get in and drive it away. So when the owners most likely come out and say, what are you doing with my car? What do we say? And Jesus didn't say, give them this dissertation of the gospel. Jesus didn't say, explain to them what the hieroglyphics meant and explain to them the deep meaning of what's about to happen. No. Jesus didn't say, okay, tell them who I am. I'm the Messiah. I'm this Big Mac daddy. I'm about to do this and all this is going to happen and I'll give them wealth beyond measure and nothing. Just tell them the Lord needs it. Okay. (laughs) So they went and just as they had suspected, what are you doing? Uh, The Lord needs it. Okay. Now some of you missed that. You're waiting for the deep thing. What does the Greek mean of need? The Greek word need means you need it. It's probably hippomacabalo, whatever, but it means you need it. Oh, it means desperate need. Well, desperate or not, you need it. There's an absence thereof and you need that. He didn't say the Lord wants it. Didn't say the Lord is asking for it. He said the Lord needs it. Now that may be a little deep, but some of you may be happy about that. We're finally getting deep on the preaching here. The Lord needs it. What's amazing to me is that's all it took for them to let their investment go. Because this was their investment. They bought it at this age and paid for it. Or they bought it younger and cared for it to this age. 
to be writable was two or three years, give or take, whatever. And in other, it's not like, oh, yeah, this, is, this doesn't cost me anything. They had an investment in this animal. And all it took was this. The Lord needs it. And when they said the Lord needs it, they were okay with that. So my question for you this morning is, the Lord needs it. What have you invested in that the Lord is saying today, I need it? Now I realize just from from the big picture, God does not need anything I have. (laughs) Some people are like, boy, God is lucky to have me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I want to start a campaign. I don't know how to do it. It would be so offensive to people. But it would be awesome. (laughs) This is, it it, it would be just a small thing. We could sell them for $9.99. It would be awesome. Because this is what it would be. If you have a problem... Here's the solution. And it would be a mirror. (laughs) Most people spend their life complaining about everybody else when the majority of their problems. Well, I tell you what. Oh, that's the problem. Okay. $9.99. It would be a hit. We could do a social media. I could do an app. Here's your problem. It's a picture of you. Steal my idea. Make a million. That's okay. Just give it to Hope Center Church. Hallelujah. Don't forget global missions in the process. You see, what is God saying today that he needs from you? And I get that he doesn't necessarily need what I can give him. But, 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 but God is not going to come down and preach the gospel in this world. God is not going to send angels down here to preach the gospel. God has chosen his church to preach the gospel. God has chosen us to reach our world. God has chosen us to show love and compassion and kindness and understanding and forgiveness and mercy and grace to our world. It doesn't come from any other institution. It comes from the church. It comes from the body of Jesus Christ. We are the hope of the world. So the Lord is simply saying today, I need some things. I need something from you. What is the Lord saying? Is it may, may, maybe it's your education. Maybe it's your talent. Maybe it's your ability. Maybe you've not gotten involved like you should get involved, like you could get involved. And you just feel the Lord. You feel that tapping on the shoulder there. Hey, hey, I need this. And it's not that he can't do it without you. But the Lord is saying, I don't just want it, but I need it. It's imperative to the success of my kingdom. Now, I understand, Brother Scoggins, if I get myself out of the picture, God is going to get somebody else to do it. But I don't want God to get somebody else to do it. I don't want God to get the stones to cry out when I can praise him. I don't want God to have to find somebody else to pray and intercede for a city when I can do it. I don't want God to have to find somebody else to raise up another people, to raise up another individual when I'm the one that can say, God, here am I. Use me. It's really quite simple. The Lord has need of it. Now, understand this. When we talk about finances, I know we're, we're talking dangerous stuff here. Don't mess with my money. Don't, don't, don't touch my money. I won't touch your money. I'm not. I won't touch your money. I used to tell my church in El Salvador, 
I don't want your money. I'm not interested in your money. Because really the, the, the truth is, if you're given to God and you're sold out to God, that's just a byproduct. That giving is just simply a byproduct. It's just what you do. And, and, and people that are really just into God, 100%, entregado 100%, de la cabeza a la planta. It's just, you know, it's just, it's there. It's an outflow. Just, just the thing that they talk about God. They, 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 their whole life is governed by God. Not perfect. None of us are perfect. But, but if we, if we navigate somewhere, oh, I don't like that. Let's get out of there. <laughs> that's how, that's how they live. That's what they do. And I know people, I, I, and you know, I mean, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. Well, no, they're not there, but anyway. <clears throat> you know, I, I know some people that just, if God gives them 10 bucks, it's a little blessing. They would never give it in the offering. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go buy me something with that. And that's why God doesn't bless them with $1,000 or $10,000. Because when he gave them the little stuff, oh, yeah, I'm going to give me something nice with that. <laughs> But then there's other people that God didn't even bless them with that. And they gave it sacrificially. And the Lord said, That's, you know what? You can handle it. You can do the right thing with it. And God blesses people. But God doesn't bless us just so we can go out and get more stuff for us. God blesses us so we can bless his kingdom. I believe there's a place in the kingdom of God that, and, and I have friends that, They're not ministers. They don't want to be. They don't pretend to be. But they're givers. They're instrumental. God has blessed them. God has used them. I'm not a businessman. I'm, I'm not a good businessman. I'm not a bad business. I'm just not a businessman. I don't think that way. I have friends that will be driving together and they see something. They, oh man, I could do this and I could. Do... Why are you even thinking that way? That's just, they're entrepreneurs. That's how they think. Hallelujah. But God blesses us so we can bless his kingdom and bless other people. I want you to uh, stand if you would. I know we got a few more minutes before we close out here. <clears throat> you know, when in our Bible school in El Salvador, we, uh, <clears throat> one of our, uh, one of our, materials was tabernacle and uh, tabernacle went on for three semesters a year and a half of class because there's a lot in the tabernacle and one of our teachers uh, he resigned actually left the organization so I was uh, the director of the Bible college and so no one wanted to teach tabernacle not one teacher wanted to touch it so I had to take it over And I was a little apprehensive because it's just so detailed. And, but once I got into it, I loved Tabernacle. I just love the Tabernacle and, and all the stuff about it. And, and uh, it's just, just so interesting and amazing. But one of the things about the Tabernacle, when, when you really study, they got the gold and the silver and the, and the brass and they've got the, 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 the jewels and the cloth and all these amazing things. But they were slaves. They didn't have a repository of national wealth to pull from. But the Bible says, when they left Egypt, the Lord said, I want you to borrow from the Egyptians silver and gold and brass, precious stones, fine twined linen. <laughs> and he said, I'm going to put them in your heart to give it to you. And when they left They left laden down. But here's the thing that I think is, is, now that's a principle in and of itself, but what I think is very important is this. Israel took the gold and made a calf with it. God said, I didn't give you the gold to make a false idol with. Crush it up, put it in the water, drink it. Levites, Start killing. 
3,000 died. 3,000 died. Because they used what God had given them the wrong way. They made earrings and bracelets and all this stuff with it. God said, take it off. I didn't give it to you to put it on yourself. He said, now, I want you to take the gold and I want you to make me some boards covered in gold. I want you to make me a table and an altar and I want you to make me a candlestick. I want you to make me the the mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant. I want you to make me some rods. I want you to take the brass and I want you to make me a laver. I want you to make me an altar. I want you to make me some bases down here. I want you to take some silver Make some rods and make some chapters on top of the columns. That's what I want you to do with it. I want you to take those precious stones and I want you to put them here for the high priest to wear. Put some up here and engrave the names of the children of Israel. He's carrying that burden on his shoulders. That's what I want. That's why I gave it to you. I want you to take those skins and I want you to take that cloth and I want you to make me a perimeter around this whole place. I want you to make a door here coming in. I want you to make the last entrance going into the Holy of Holies. I want you to cover it this way and cover it that way. I don't want anybody to be able to look in. Nobody can look inside and see. And God said, that's the reason I gave you the gold and the silver and the brass and the precious stones and the cloth. I didn't give it to you so that you could just dress yourselves and look nice and admire one another. I gave it to you so you could use it for my glory in my kingdom and in my house. If God has given you talents and abilities, if God has given you the smartest mind that creation has ever seen, you be the most awesome mathematician with these algorithms and formulas and everything under the sun. That is amazing. But use it for God as well. If God has allowed you to be the the greatest singer, musician, if, if you're awesome in that field, use it. You can use it professionally. That's okay. Don't do bad stuff with it, but but use it for God. If you're the most awesome teacher, God has given you the ability to teach and communicate. Don't just use it to be a teacher. Use it in his kingdom as well. If God has blessed you financially, if God has blessed you and given you things, don't just have it for yourself. This is for God's kingdom. He didn't just give it to me so that I could use it for myself. He gave it to me so that I could use it in his kingdom. And then God says that is exactly what I want. Because now everybody comes to this tabernacle of meeting. It's where I talk with my people. Praise God. 